Ladies and gentlemen, I am joined right now by one of the best up and comers in Ontario today. He is none other than Tyler Arrow. How are you doing today, man? I'm doing pretty good. How are you doing? Real good. And I'm excited because Tyler's going to be joining us at 365 Pro Wrestling on February 29th on the Leap Year event. And I'm really excited for this. I've heard so many good things about you. I've been on a few shows with you, some uh, MCW and a couple Alpha shows. So I just can't wait to have you on these events. Yeah, for sure. I'm really looking forward to it. I think the last, I think the last time we were actually on in a uh, venue together would have been would have been the last MCW show, the one before that. I think so too. Um, but since then, I've been hearing a lot, a lot of good things. I know you're still very young. You started training when you were 18 with Rip at HPW. Yeah, well, I, I originally started at 16 elsewhere because, like, in that time frame, uh, I didn't know. I don't even know if at that time there was any schools that would take someone at that age. But uh, I started training at 16 and had a, a handful of matches because, you know, it's kind of kind of hard to get booked at that age. Um, so one, I think in my when I turned 18, I think that was I, I had nine months off. And then I found Rip School, and I was—I believe I was just about to turn 19, or I was 19, and I've been with them ever since. Uh, for, this is coming up, I think, on my at the end of my second year with him now. Nice. And how is the training with Rip? I've known him for a long time. He's always been a guy who goes out there and takes seminars. He learns from a lot of people. And now for him to have his own school in Hamilton, I'm, uh, I haven't been able to make a class yet, but I'm really interested in seeing what, what philosophy he teaches with and how he, uh, approaches you guys. Oh, honestly, it's, it's I want to say it changes every, every little while, uh, You'll spend this uh, period of time on certain things, you know, especially with the the newer guys that you get coming in. He's really good at being one on one with people whenever you get the time, you know, during class or during a private session. And he really fog he he knows after just a certain amount of time of training, he knows your strengths and your weaknesses, which is really good because with me, uh, my biggest fault, as much as I'm a high flyer, when I started out with him, my biggest fault was uh, probably rope work, um, like any springboards or any top row moves anything like that and i think i really showcase how much i've improved with that just from working with him over the last few months specifically on that and uh i had my match with evan greenaway at that student show i want to say last saturday and i was doing stuff with the ropes that i don't think i i would have even imagined myself doing uh i, I don't know if it was necessarily a balance thing or just uh, you know, there's small cables, so it's like a small platform. I'm not too sure what it was specifically, but I've been working on that with him for the last while, and he's really helped me out in that sense because he knows, to, from what I can tell, he knows a little bit of everything at this point with uh, the experience he has and the matches he's had and, like you said, the seminars he's been uh, been at. So it's really great working with him, and you get to work with so many different, uh, different guys with different styles, uh, different experience levels, and it's always great like i'm there as much as i can mostly two or three times a week and then i'll set up some private sessions to work on specific things uh so I, I, he's a he's great he's a great guy and a great coach like i have a blast with him that's awesome man and the rope work was that do you think it was like just a mental block or was it just trying to find your feet uh i, I think it was a bit of both you know like and with just things i've seen over the years like the my, my prime example is the Hayabusa incident. Uh, that one really stuck with me and it and it scared, scared the hell out of me. And I'll be honest about that. So I think that there was that mental block there. Uh, so it was just kind of, you know, don't think, just do. <laughs> and I started getting the hang of it, but then it was the balance issue and then the small platform. So that was kind of once I got rid of that block, it was always not necessarily like, you know, doing a, like the Lucha arm drags or anything like that. More so it was just get up there and get your feet. And we work on that for a certain amount of time. And then eventually we led into actually completing the move. And 
I want to say it took a couple months just to kind of get over that. But now that it's it's there, I'm just trying to find the next thing that I want to work on. For sure. And that Hayabusa incident, I think, traumatized a lot of people. Um, yeah, even even myself being a, an older guy, that was something I saw and I was like, oh my God. And every time Super K does his lion salt at the Alpine Club, we have a low ceiling there. It terrifies me. Oh yeah, like I, I think I've in training, I think I've done a lion salt maybe two or three times. Otherwise, I'm just doing it and landing on my feet. Um, so, but every time I do it, like it kind of flashes in the mind as I'm about to go, go <laughs> up and do it. But then I'm just kind of like, you know what? It's like that could happen to anybody. Uh, I'm to my knowledge, I boosted did it quite often, and it was just a freak accident. It was, and, and that's what happens in wrestling. Accidents do happen. It's a, uh, it's physical. This is not a, uh, it's not something that everyone can do. And you got to train and train and train, and that's a big thing. And Rip put you over saying you're always at class. You're always trying to learn. So it's great to hear you saying that as well. That you enjoy being there and just putting in the work. Now. Another thing I see you putting in a lot of work is something I'm trying to do right now with 365, and that's with my social media. I'm trying to get some buzz out there for the company. I'm trying to make sure we post something every day. That's why we're doing a, a daily podcast. But I also see you doing it all the time. After every match, I usually see a highlight video or something like a clip package. And what got you into that, and why are you doing it? Honestly, the... Well, right now, unfortunately, my computer decided to take a dive on me, I like to say. So I've been really behind on that. I still have to do a few matches. Uh, like my last match, for example, I still haven't put out my match with uh, Ethan Page from Courage Pro. Um, I got I got a lot of work to do there. But uh, I've always been a fan of that kind of stuff. But when I was younger, um, which this is kind of this kind of gives an insight as to why I wrestle the way I do. Uh, when I was a teenager and everything, I was a really big fan of that parkour lifestyle and free running. Um, and I used to just make a bunch of videos with my friends, you know, in parks, at schools, at libraries, whatever. And uh, I was the only one who actually, at the time, between me and my friends, I was the only one who owned a camera. <laughs> and uh, I was the only one who understood how to put the videos together. So it kind of branched over in terms of the parkour and the video editing in that sense. Because uh, at that time, there was, I think the only social media would have been Facebook and like MySpace and stuff like that. But I really got into it probably in my teen years, but I never really uh, compared to now that my skills in the video editing has definitely changed for the better, thankfully. <laughs> Um, but with the social media, once that came about, like once Instagram came about, I was always on it, but I didn't really have any purpose to be on it. Like I never really cared to post, uh, you know, pictures of my food and all that kind of stuff. But once wrestling came about, that's all, that's all I wanted, uh, to use it for. I completely disregarded the personal life aspect on social media and tried to make it all about wrestling. Um, so after every match, I want to like, you know, I want to thank the town and the company that I was just with, uh, depending on the person, I would say I'll thank the person and put them over too. Um, and I always try to, I like to also somewhat edit my own graphics to some extent as well, depending, cause I'm very picky with my promo pictures now, and I can say that openly. Uh, so when there's a promo shot that I don't like that was used, I'll make my own and I'll still share the promotions graphic. But it also, depending, like there could be a show two weeks from now and I don't have one in that in between that time. So it gives me another thing to post and keep things fresh on my social media page. So there's not a big gap uh, between my posts. <laughs> For sure. That makes tons of sense to me. And I think uh, with the way wrestling is now, someone's going to see a clip or a highlight reel and that's going to get you another booking somewhere else. Like that's how I see it. That's how I watch a lot of wrestling now it's not so much everyone's full match it's their highlight reel or it's their their clip exactly and i i, I like watching the full matches to some extent because i'd imagine for for promoters uh seeing seeing some full matches is pretty good because sometimes people only highlight the good stuff right they don't ha or even exactly. just the spots they don't they don't highlight the selling they don't highlight um any anything like that and also in a full match too, there could be a lot of uh, a lot of botches, for example, that you didn't see in that highlight reel. Um, which some of them you can't really avoid, depending on what the what the spot itself was. But um, I prefer the highlight reels as well, just because 
not everybody wants to sit there and watch 20, like mine and Evan's match, for example, was 25 minutes. Uh, there are people who would love to watch it, but then there's also a select amount of people who don't want to sit through a 25 minute match. <laughs> it's, it's true. I know the crowd uh, I heard was really into it. I heard all good things about it, so I can't wait till it's up just to check it out myself. Like I said, I love watching the highlights, and then that usually gets me to a person's library if I'm going to study them or look at their matches or so forth. Oh, definitely. Now, I I have to have at least almost 30 highlight videos up right now on my YouTube channel right now because um, there was a period of time where some of the matches I wouldn't say I was overly proud of because it was when I was just getting back in into the ring back when i was like uh 18 or 19 but it, once i started uh shaking the cobwebs off and getting off the ring rust i started editing as much as i possibly could with, with the permission of uh of the promotion for that is for sure and i think they like it too because it's showcasing them and and your guys's match so it's a win-win for everybody yeah now 2020 is pretty fresh. It's only February. What goals does Tyler Arrow have? Are you wanting to do more singles? Do you want to tag more with Mr. Forte? What's what's the idea? Uh, well, there's it's a it's a little bit of a mixture because I, I love tag team with with Mike. Once we got together, uh, I want to say closer to September. Uh, it's been nothing but fun since we've both had some great matches uh, together with numerous tag teams and a few different promotions. Um, and I think there there could be a very bright future in that, providing we uh, keep at it with the same mentality that we've been having. Uh, however, I al there also is that side of me that loves doing singles wrestling too, because I find, don't, uh, don't get me wrong, tag team wrestling, I find is becoming a lost art and it's starting to make its way back into, um, uh, uh, what's the word? Uh, I'll, I'll just use this word, it may, may be wrong or right, but the consistency that it was at, and how well it's done. Uh, but in singles wrestling, I feel I can really perfect myself uh, because you know if you got if you have a ten minute match in a tag match, you may only get a certain amount depending on who your tag partner is. I should say, but me and Mike are normally good for that. We normally uh, make it even. I'll call it. Uh, but I think for this year, I kind of how things are right now. I kind of do want to make more of my focus more towards uh, the tag team. With Mike, uh, with a few singles matches in between, I'm not sure what his plan is, but as of now, it, we seem to be on the same page in that sense. Nice. And just because we keep these pretty short, I'm gonna cut us off pretty quick. But before that, I need to know who are some of your dream opponents for the next couple of years. Who do you want to get in that ring with and share it with, both as a singles wrestler and as a tag team wrestler? Uh, you know, as as tag team, I'd love to go. I'd love for me and Mike to go up against Gym Rats as as one one of those teams. Uh, everything I've seen from them is just amazing. Even in singles matches, just amazing. Um, and one that I really love to work on in a singles match is actually Safe Travis because he nice. been, he's improved he's improved so much over the, over the last while. Uh, him and I are great friends. We get along. We get along like almost better than I get along with my tag partner almost. Um, but just how he's improved over the last while and some of the matches he's had, even his one with Rip and Welland. Um, it, it, he's just one of those guys that I think we could put on a great match, be, be it if it's going to be short or long. I think we could keep the crowd uh, invested in that for at least a 10 minute match, you know. <laughs> but he's they, those are guys, those got to be the big ones for me. Awesome. No, that'd be really amazing. You guys versus Jim Rax, Hacker and Alessandro, that'd be amazing. But right now, I need to know where people can reach out to you and see you on social media. Where can they connect with you? Uh, you know, they, they can find me on just about everything. I do have a Twitter that I do lack in using a bit, but um, I've been getting better. But for my Instagram, uh, my Twitter, and my YouTube account, uh, it's Tyler Arrow with the uh, in the arrow. There's a three instead of an E. <laughs> and uh, on Facebook, just Tyler Arrow. Uh, I try to keep it generic so it's really easy to find me. But uh, yeah, those are the main platforms that I use. Instagram more than most, I think, but I still use all three. Perfect. Well, thank you so much for being on here. I can't wait to see you in the ring on February 29th with 365 in Kitchener, and we're gonna be talking again soon. I'm sure. Definitely. Thank you for having me and uh, I'll see you soon.